Happy Treaty Week, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing me to be part of your Treaty Appreciation Week events at your school, whether it's a staff meeting or professional development or just a few of you getting together to talk about these issues. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. honored to be welcomed into your circle of superhero educators who work with superhero kids of all backgrounds and abilities. It's really very special to be asked to share my thoughts on Treaty Week, reconciliation, and the importance of ongoing Indigenous education. But first, let me introduce myself. Kwe Nindeluizi Pampometer. I'm an Ilnu and come from sovereign Mi'kmaq Nation, an unceded Mi'kmaq. That's the eastern part of Turtle Island, what is now known as Atlantic Canada. My home territory includes all of PEI, Nova Scotia, parts of New Brunswick, Quebec, Newfoundland, and even parts of Maine. We are all part of one nation, the Mi'kmaq, despite the fact that we have since been divided into tiny reserves known as First Nations. I am both a citizen of the larger Mi'kmaq Nation, but also a member of Eel River Bar First Nation, also known as Ugabaganjig, one of the Mi'kmaq reserves in northern New Brunswick. But today, I live, work, and make this video within sovereign Mississaugas of Scugog territory. The Mississaugas of Scugog describe themselves as a branch of the larger Ojibwe Nation, generally referred to as the Anishinaabeg. Their traditional homeland was north of Lake Huron, but they were forced to relocate due to violent European dispersals of the Wendat peoples. French called them the Huron. So the Mississaugas ended up in the present area around 1700 or so, and the majority of their lands were stolen by fraudulent Europeans who not only dealt in bad faith, but the documents and agreements which were alleged to have surrendered lands were so flawed that even some government officials agreed these agreements had to be invalid. Today, the Mississaugas of Scugog have less than a thousand acres that they had to buy themselves. Their land rights have never been fully or fairly resolved. Now, I don't speak for the Mississaugas of Scugog. We are from totally separate nations and they have their own spokespeople. I share this information because land acknowledgements often leave out the land theft part of the acknowledgement. I believe that in an era of true reconciliation with Indigenous peoples, we are honour-bound to do better than gloss over the centuries of violence, genocide, land dispossession and oppression that have led us to where we are today. And some of you might be thinking, hey wait a second, isn't this supposed to be Treaty Appreciation Week? Shouldn't we be celebrating how important treaties are in Ontario? Yes. Treaties are important in Ontario and all over Canada, but treaties have been broken more times than they've been honoured and even the treaty making process was at times violent and fraudulent. It's also important to acknowledge the fact that both federal and provincial governments, including Ontario, have fought tooth and nail against treaty implementation and have often been dragged kicking and screaming to the courts using millions of taxpayers' dollars to fight against our treaty rights. The students we all work with should also be taught about this very lived reality. Not unsurprisingly, you won't get this perspective from any government website. Students need to understand the First Nation perspective of treaties, the real spirit and intent, the ongoing broken promises in treaties by governments, and our continued battle in the courts and on the ground to get governments to finally respect treaties. But. If we are to find age-appropriate ways to educate our students about treaties, that means that we as educators have to come from a place of knowledge and understanding about the treaties as well. None of us, including me as a Mi'kmaq lawyer and professor, can ever know everything there is to know about every treaty in every territory and their important historical and current contexts. That's fair. But we can be continuously educating ourselves about First Nations and the treaties in our province and our district. 
That is what reconciliation is all about. It's about taking substantive actions as educators to learn more, teach more, and do more. It's about education, not just for informational purposes, but education for action. In every rural commission or public inquiry related to the many injustices faced by First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, each report makes hundreds of recommendations for governments to take action to remedy ongoing injustices. Whether it's the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission final report, or the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. All of these reports share very common messages. But what a lot of people don't know is that in each report, there are also recommendations for Canadians. Because Canadians, just like their governments, share in both the benefit from the ongoing injustices of Indigenous peoples and the obligation to remedy it. Students need to realize that they, their families, and their communities have a positive obligation to make things right. This is not about whether you personally stole someone's land, but do you benefit from stolen lands? Yes, of course you do. So that means doing what you can to remedy the injustices. Not just the historical ones, but also the current ones. And I know how hard you all work as educators, teaching our kids, especially during this pandemic, and how it might seem like there is precious little time left over for you as educators to continue your own educational journeys. I get it. I'm an educator myself, and I know how much work goes into research, planning, and teaching. However, as professionals, we are obligated to continuously engage in professional development, training and education on all subjects related to our work. And that includes Indigenous peoples. But here's the unfair part. All levels of government in Canada have failed miserably at educating the public about First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples, our histories, our current realities and our rights like treaty rights. For generations, our histories and lived realities have been left out of not only K-12 curriculum, but in post-secondary education curriculum for teachers, teaching assistants, early childhood educators, and all those who are part of the education system. Add to this the government's additional failure to engage in broad public education through government resources, the media, and other forums, and we have a country that has all but erased the sovereign native nations that have occupied Turtle Island since time immemorial. Yes, it's true that in the last generation, largely because of the advocacy on the part of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, that public schools and universities have worked hard to include more Indigenous content. And that's fantastic. However, many schools still lag very far behind, with many educators getting very little education on Indigenous issues. That might make some feel nervous or hesitant about teaching Indigenous content because they feel like they don't know enough. And that's understandable. If I was asked to start teaching about the history and current context of Aotearoa, I would be at a disadvantage because I'm not Maori. I have never taught these things before. I would need to do some self-education in real short order. And while resources from the New Zealand government might be helpful, I would first look for Indigenous or Maori content. Then I would have to start my imperfect self-education journey to learn what I can on my own and seek out colleagues who might be further along in the journey than I am, and hopefully they can share some advice and guidance. It would be wonderful if every employer would ensure that we all had the necessary resources and training that we needed to be able to teach this new Indigenous content effectively. But sometimes that's not the case. And if that's the case for you, that might mean that you have to take the steps to do it yourself, which can seem very overwhelming and even intimidating. It would be hard to know even where to start. In reality, none of us want to teach anything that's wrong, and we certainly don't want to make any mistakes that might offend or hurt somebody. And the fear of offending someone sometimes means that we just avoid doing it altogether. But when that happens, 
indigenous peoples are erased from our teaching and that is not a good outcome either. So what do we do? Well, you might not like the answer, but reconciliation with indigenous peoples requires that we set aside our discomfort or our hesitancy and just get to work. Because the alternative, not self-educating or trying to find ways to include indigenous peoples and our lived realities in your teaching, would simply condemn Indigenous peoples to a continued future of exclusion, misunderstanding, and injustice. And I think when we weigh the pros and cons fairly, we naturally come to the conclusion that continued injustice for Indigenous peoples is simply not acceptable. So, what are the next steps? Well, it's perfectly fair to advocate jointly with your colleagues that your employer dedicate some time and resources to providing professional education on Indigenous issues, and not just on a one-off basis, but an ongoing series of training. And I think it's also fair ball to advocate within your unions or associations for more attention and training in this area as well. I also think that you could provide feedback to universities, colleges, and other training institutes so that the next generation of educators will start off on a much stronger footing in Indigenous education. At the end of the day, no matter what kind of training is offered, it will never be enough. It will always require that you engage in some form of self-education. And yes, inviting guest lecturers to your classes can be an amazing part of learning for both teachers and students. And the more students hear from Indigenous peoples, the better. But the reality is, we don't have enough Indigenous elders, experts, and educators to make it to all of your classes all of the time to be able to do this important work. So ask your school, your district, your union, and your colleagues for places to start. Who are the local contacts? Usually from those initial resources, you can find your way to other people and other resources to use in your classroom. And yes, by all means, the internet is a powerful source of excellent Indigenous resources and people working specifically in Indigenous education. There are countless webinars, videos, podcasts, blogs, publications, and you name it, that will help you on your learning journey. I personally learn so much even about my own Mi'kmaq culture and language on the internet. Now it's true, the internet can be a messy place when you first start out. It's hard to know what is authentic, what is hokey, and what is outright fraud. But if you build out from your initial sources, you'll be okay. And here's a tip. Don't get caught up in thinking that everything Indigenous is about religion and ceremony and you can only learn it in a sweat lodge. Yes, it's true, some teachings are set in a ceremonial context, only taught by elders according to certain customs and protocols, but we're not asking you to teach that. We want students to learn that in addition to our spirituality, we are powerful nations of sovereign people, just like any other nation. Yes, our different nations have our own beliefs and ceremonies, as well as our storytelling, songs and dances, but we're powerful nations with nation-based laws, justice systems, governing practices, politics, economies, science, technology, international diplomacy, environmental protection, trade and human rights. Don't limit us to cultural attributes. Celebrate our nations as nations. Not only will that make your self-education job easier, but it helps us on our path out of stereotyping far more achievable. So these are just some of my thoughts on Treaty Week, reconciliation, and self-education. I'll also leave some links in the description box below for you to consider including in your own self-education journey. Oh, and since it's Treaty Appreciation Week, I'll also post links to some videos on Mi'kmaq Treaty issues as well. Though, I have to give you a strong content warning. These videos do not depict peaceful acts of treaty appreciation. Thank you all for listening. I hope it was helpful. Well, Aliag.